What's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to be giving you the best controller settings and graphic settings you can be using right now in Warzone 3. And when I say best settings, I mean the best settings that I am using right now because your settings may be different and your settings should be different. And you should just be using settings like mine or any other pro and adjusting them to fit your play style and make you more comfortable. Because if you're not comfortable and if you're not pushing your enemies, you're not going to get more eliminations and more wins, which is why we're here. Also, I'm going to show you a tip that will help you win more long range gunfights and control your recoil a little bit better and i'm going to give you some really low recoil loadouts that you can be using right now in warzone 3 that will help you amplify your game even more let's get into it so first i'm going to show you a tip that's going to help you control that recoil a little bit more instead of adjusting your aim down range with your right analog stick we're going to adjust your aim with your left analog stick what happens when you use a right analog stick to make your micro adjustments you can overshoot your target quite a bit so instead what we're going to do is use our left analog stick in order to make those micro adjustments. And this is gonna help your game an absolute ton. So while we're shooting, instead of doing this to try to adjust your aim, we're gonna activate what's called rotational aim assist. Rotational aim assist is what this will activate. You see a lot of your favorite streamers or favorite Call of Duty players moving their character in a circular motion like this. This will activate the normal aim assist, but the, what's broken is that rotational aim assist. And you don't have to go in a full circle. It can be from side to side, it can be forward, it can be backward. But what I want you to do in the firing range is get in there and work on adjusting your aim like this and activating that rotational aim assist. This will help you out a ton. It also helps to have those low recoil loadouts, which we'll give you here in a little bit, but we're gonna work on getting that accuracy way up and stop using this to adjust our aim and it should end up looking something a little like that so just to refresh don't aim like this down range adjust your aim like this so your sight doesn't move as much and you're not over aiming or overshooting your enemy so just adjust just like that. Now, let's get you those controller settings. For my controller settings, obviously I have my input device set to controller. I'm using a custom aim controller, so I have these back buttons set like this. This one is set to A. This one is set to my jump. This one is set to my crouch or slide. I have this one as my RB or my knife throw. This bottom left one right here, when I feel like sniping, I have set to my left stick press down. That way I'm not getting any kind of stick drift, so I'm holding my breath with my sniper with this one. You want your controller vibration set to off, that way you're not getting any other vibrations inside of your controller that will also cause stick drift in the future. I have my trigger effect set to weapon fire threshold. My dead zone inputs are left stick minimum is zero, left stick max is 100. I have my right stick minimum set to four. My right stick max set to 100. My left trigger set to zero. That way it gives you kind of that click trigger feel along with the right trigger set to zero as well. If you go to show more and you put your test stick dead zones on and you notice any kind of movement on any of your sticks, you wanna turn these left stick and right stick minimums up a little bit. That way you don't have any kind of movement on on these dead zones. Now for my aiming, my horizontal stick sensitivity and vertical stick sensitivity is set to 10. My ADS sensitivity multipliers set to one. My sensitivity multipliers are all set to one. My vertical aim access, all standard. My tax sensitivity multiplier set to one. My aim response curve type set to dynamic. My ADS sensitivity multiplier, I have a 0.9. My ADS sensitivity transition timing is set to instant. My custom sensitivity per zoom, I have off, but you can have those on if you want. If you have those on, use these right here. They're pretty solid, but I just usually have those off. My target aim assist is obviously on. On. my aim assist type is set to default you can have it on black ops but default just seems to be the better option right now there's really not a huge difference in the two so i just usually set mine to default my ads aim assist is obviously on my third person ads correction type is set to assist my motion sensor behavior is off and also what i want you to do is go to your motion sensor advanced settings here and you'll notice that the fov sensitivity scaling is usually set to on you want to turn that off just to be safe because what this does is sensitivity is scaled down or up depending on what optic you're using so you don't you want everything to have the same sensitivity feel so turn this off For my gameplay controller settings i have this uh, automatic tactical sprint my slide maintain sprint i have that set to on my auto move forward you obviously want that off tactical sprint behavior single tap to run uh ground mantle off my automatic airborne mantle i have set to partial automatic ground mantle hang i have set to off my slide dive behavior is slide only you can also have this as hybrid plunging underwater i have it to free my parachute automatic behavior definitely set to off that way you can drop lower uh especially when you're flying back in printing door bash yeah, i have set to on my ledge climb behavior set to mantle only my aim down sight behavior i have set to hold my change zoom activation i have sprint tactical sprint and focus my equipment behavior i have set to hold weapon mount activation ads and melee 
which is pretty standard. Uh, weapon mount exit delay, I have set to instant. My tactical stance activation, ADS plus the down button. The tactical stance behavior, I have set to on toggle, interact, reload behavior. You definitely want this on prioritize interact. This will allow you just to tap and pick up an item instead of having to hold down your button, which takes forever. My armor plate behavior, I set to apply all. ADS stick swap, I have off. My backpack control directional buttons. Pleated ammo weapon switch, I have set to on. Quick C4 detonation, I have grouped. Manual fire behavior, I have set to press. Akimbo behavior is independent. I have vehicle camera recenter, I have a short delay there. Camera initial position, free look. Lean out activation, melee. Scoreboard, map, stats, behavior, toggle. Ping wheel delay, moderate. Double tap, danger, ping delay, set to moderate. And wheels behavior set to hold. Now, if I go to my graphic settings, you want to go all the way over to view make sure your field of view is set to around 110 to 120 depending on how far back away from your screen you are your ads field of view is set to affected weapon field of view is set to wide so that way you're able to see more of the screen and less of the weapon at the time you want your world motion blur off your weapon motion blur off you want your film grain set to zero and you want to make sure your first person camera movement is set to least and your third person camera movement is set to least. You can have an inverted flashbang, that way it turns to black instead of white. When it turns to black, I usually think my like my game shuts down, so that's why I don't have it on. If you're looking for a little bit better color settings just for your game in general, go to color customization. I've got my HUD color palette set to custom. That it's because I turn my enemy things and to pink or like this magenta color. Um, that way they're easier to see in my opinion. And then I have my color filter set to color filter two and have it set to both and make sure those are both on 100. This will give you a little bit more vibrant gameplay look and feel. My audio mix I have set to home theater. That's what I've always been running. My master game volume I have set to 100, but the gameplay music volume set to zero. Dialogue volume I have set to like 10. Effects volume I have at 100. That's what your footsteps come from. And voice chat volume I have set to 12, but that's custom married to whatever you're hearing in your headphones. And also something you can do is test your microphone. If you turn on this testing microphone, uh, you can go up to your microphone level if you hear like a buzzing or something like that, or you one of your friends is buzzing have them turn their microphone level down inside of the game that way it's able to go below that threshold and you're not able to hear that buzzing or fan in the background i know that's going to help a lot of people now that you have those controller settings and things like that i want to make sure to give you guys some really low recoil weapons to try and loadouts to try in warzone 3 or model warfare 3 whichever you play the one i was using was this uh mcw in the example i use the zimmon 35 compensated flash muzzle the mcw cyclone long barrel the bruin heavy support grip under barrel i'm using that new jack glassless optic that you can earn by doing challenges in, in week four and the 60 round drum you guys already saw that in the firing range but then uh, another really low recoil option is this mtz 556 the zimmon 35 compensated flash hider muzzle the mtz drifter heavy long barrel the bruin heavy support grip under barrel the jack glassless optic and the 50 round drum as well but uh man very low recoil a lot of fun to run and uh, easy, easy to control and pretty high damage output. Another really solid one is the new battle rifle. The new battle rifle doesn't have a ton of recoil and it hits very, very hard, definitely in the meta, but compensated flash hider muzzle again, the Zimmer 35, that Dozer 90 long barrel, the Bruin heavy support grip under barrel, or if you have a little bit more trouble controlling that vertical recoil, use the Chimera Ryan 03 uh, vertical grip, but uh, the 50 round drum and that Jack glassless optic. Um, but this thing, man, it's a lot of fun to run. If you haven't been using this, you're you're missing out, man. You need to make sure to go uh, go use it, check it out, and work on that uh, work on that aiming tip that I gave you. Then the, pretty much the new AR meta is the Holger 556, and it doesn't have hardly any recoil at all either. You want to use that Zimmon 35 uh, compensated flash muzzle, the Cryo 6 match uh, barrel, the Bruin heavy support grip under barrel, the Jack glassless optic, and I like the 40 round mag here show this to you guys here in the firing range and uh but yeah very little recoil very high damage output and a lot a lot of fun to run and if you're into lmgs i think the easiest uh lmg to control right now is probably my favorite lmg the bruin uh it's not the number one overall meta the evolver's number one overall and that uh recoil is pretty easy to control but it's got such a slow fire rate which i think really holds it back but it's still, honestly, when it comes to TTK, the Evolver's number one. But when it comes to recoil control, I think the Bruin is now number one, in my opinion. Uh, we're going with that Zimmer 35 compensated flash muzzle, the XRK Horizon V2 barrel, the Bruin heavy support grip under barrel. I like the 60 round mag on this. And then the Jack glassless optic again. Show this one to you guys here in the firing range, but very easy to control, very high damage output, especially at range when it comes to the recoil control. I just... 
I absolutely love it. And then a little bit underrated AR, in my opinion, is the Castle 545, but it's also very easy to control the recoil on this as well. You're going with the Zimmer 35 compensated flash, IG K3406 millimeter, uh, the Bruin heavy support grip under barrel. I like the Jack Glasses optic again, or the T uh, Eagle's eyes fit perfectly fine as well. And the 60 round mag. Something else I like to test while I'm here in the firing range is how much ammo I have left after shooting all three of these six dummies. I have 23 bullets left out of a 60 round mag after shooting three full plated dummies. So really, really solid, especially when it comes to comparing it to other weapons that I'm using. And I have seven after shooting five of these dummies now. So that's really, really solid in my opinion. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that noti bell so you don't miss another video like this or like any of these. We'll see you in the next one.